All right, hello everyone. This is Michael Torbert with the Georgia Forest Commission. Today I'm going to show you how to make a printable map from an RGIS Pro from a pre configured map package called Wildfire and RX Mapping. All right, with this package, um, it's come with, obviously it comes with a few tools, a few web layers over here, and it also comes with a couple of templates that are already pre configured that you can take the existing map that you've made, throw it into these templates, export the PDF and print. Today I'm just gonna show you the layout side of this. So since the map is already created, let's get to it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with this portrait pre-configured template right here. So I'm gonna click on it. And as you see, when you get here, um, the map is already pre-configured. There's pretty simple, not a whole lot to it. Over here in the uh, contents side of the, uh, of ArcGIS Pro is all of your different elements that are included on the map. Um, one thing obviously that's missing is the map itself, so I need to add the map to this template. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here, click on this insert tab. Map frame, I'm going to add a map frame, and the name on the map is Wildfire and RX Mapping. Right here, click that, and there is my map. Um, you see these blue lines here? These are called guides. These enable me, what I can do is take my frame here, my map frame, snap it to these guides so that it's evenly displaced upon, on, the, on the piece of paper for printing. So I'm gonna stretch it out. There you go. Now, one thing you just noticed is that the uh, map frame has covered up all my map elements. That's because my map frame is sitting on top of all my elements over here in the uh, content side of uh, Arc GIS Pro. So what I'm going to do is take map frame, drag it down to the bottom, and there you go. Now you can see all my map elements again. Um, first thing you notice is that my map, as it sits right now, is currently not quite centered on my paper and I need to uh, adjust it so that you can see everything that I want you to see within my map. Um, as it sits right now, it is not movable. There's, it's not adjustable. Um, I, can quickly see, I can do this and it's not gonna move the inside of my map. Let me go ahead and hit the undo button, get everything lined back up there. To, to be able to activate this map where I can zoom in and zoom out, what I'll have to do is go over to my contents page here, right click on map frame and click activate. Now, with my mouse, I can zoom in, zoom out, and adjust it how I need to. And then once I'm happy with where I'm, where I'm at, I can stop here, click layout here, and that closes it right back up. And if I want to make sure that I don't accidentally move this map frame over here on the content side of the page, I can click this lock looking button, and that locks it. So now, if I want to grab it and try to move it, I can't move it. So that's a good little safety tool to have. All right, so next thing we wanna do is uh, we wanna adjust my scale bar. As you can see right here, it is uh, not displaced too well. So we need to make it where it looks nice and readable. Um, the way to do that is the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click it. When I click it, I don't know if you noticed, but up here, scale bar pops up and I have two new tabs that have just displayed. This is where I can make my adjustments. Um, before I do that, I want to make sure that my scale bar though, is activated, is syncing in with my uh, map. Um, the way to do that is my scale bar over here in the content side, you see where it says alternating scale bar? I wanna click this and I wanna go to properties. And if I look, scale bar down here, it's not associated with any map frame, so it doesn't know what scale to use. So what I need to do is give it a map, give it a map frame. So click map frame. And there you go. So and if I close it, and there is my scale bar um, in sync with my map frame. Um, if I wanted to adjust these values, I could click on the click on the legend. I mean, click on the uh, alternating scale bar right there. The tabs pop up. Excuse me. Click on design. Right now, my division value is 500 feet. Every one of these is 500 feet. I can change my units from feet to miles. I can change it to 200 feet, 
I could change the number of divisions. I could even add subdivisions. This is for you to play around with, but as it sits right now, I'm pretty happy with it, so I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna click off of it, right, just like that. Um, the rest of this is pretty easy. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna give my uh, map a title. And we're gonna call this map, we will call it the Gowan Fire. Close, there you go. And I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my credentials over here in this bottom right box here. Double click on it, prepared by, and that's gonna be me. Georgia Forest Commission, today's date. And the coordinate system I'm using, and this is a this is in Scraven County, so I'm gonna call this NAD83 UTM Zone 17 North. Hit apply. There you go. And we're just about done already with this map. So you, I've got my title, my, I've got my GFC logo, North Arrow, Scale Bar, and I've also got my credentials. The next thing that I need is a legend. So what we're going to do for the legend is very simply, I'm going to go up here, click on this legend box under Insert Legend, and I'm going to draw it in. Just draw a little box. There's my legend can't see it very well because there is no background to it. Right now, as you can see, it's selected by the, by the little, uh, vert, I, I'd call them vertices, where you can drag them and expand the box. So what I'm gonna do is click on this Format tab, Legend Format. And over here on the left-hand side, I'm gonna just click this and go down to Background. And when I do that, I can change the background of my legend. So right now, I generally want my background of my legend to be the same color as my title and my credentials over here. That's gonna be a light blue for this case. You can make it whatever you want. There you go, there's my legend. Next thing I wanna do is it's a little tightly wound. Uh, I wanna kinda of expand out my uh, background and to do that, this. X, the scap X, scap Y will let me do that. I'm gonna change both of these to about five and watch what happens. You see how my legend background has expanded. Now it looks a lot nice and a lot neater. Um, a couple things you may notice, um, there are a thing or two that I really don't want in my legend. Uh, imagery information, I don't need that in my legend. So what I'm gonna do is go over to my contents page, or my contents tab over here. Under legend, you see this little arrow, expand it. I'm going to turn off this that layer, flights. So that gets rid of that. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit there. All right, so there's my legend. Uh, one other thing I've noticed here is that uh, under the polygon layer that I'm working with, we have RX burn, wildfire, and planned RX burn. As you can see, I have wildfire and a planned RX burn, but I don't have an actual prescribed burn on this map. So I want to take that off. And the best way of going about doing that, there's two ways actually. So first let me line it up, make it nice and put it in a nice spot. Right there will work. Usually what you can do in this situation is click on it and go to properties. And when you go to show properties, there's this, and you go down here, it says feature display options only show features visible in the map extent. Click that. Uh, for some reason though, I've noticed today that it's not working correctly. It's only supposed to show what you've got shown on the map and it's taking extra stuff away. So let's just go ahead and keep that unchecked for now. And another way to get rid of that is what we're going to do is um, we're going to go keep, keep my layout just like it is. Let's go ahead and hit save. Always good to hit save multiple times because our GIS Pro will crash on you. Let's go back to my uh, map over here. Let's right click on Polygon and we're going to go to Symbology and RX and RX Burn. I'm going right here. I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to remove it. 
Now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to my portrait template. And as you can see, it is now removed from my legend. I'm going to tighten up my uh, blue, uh, my blue background just a little bit, make an adjustment. And there you go. Now the final step, um, that is all you have to do. The final step is I got to export this to PDF. And here we go. All you got to do is click the share tab, go to layout, export layout, and we're going to give it a name. So export to PDF, you can export to a JPEG or whatever you want by clicking on this, but we're just going to go with PDF for right now. And I'm going to call this Mac Gowan Fire. I'm going to call it too because I already did a test run of this. Hit export. All right, now let's make sure it showed up. And I saved it under my ArcGIS projects folder under McGowan Fire. And McGowan Fire 2, double click, open it up. Let me bring it in over here so you can see it. Expand it. And there you go. There's my map, nice and pretty, good and ready to roll. All right, if you have any questions, please give me a call. My number is 478-751-3321, or you can email me at mtorbit at gfc.state.ga.us. Thank you.